Hello, hello, people of the internet. My name is Ian Altavar, the Freedom Astrologer, and I'm sitting here once again with my good friends Cindy Edson and Joe Greeland from Fox Dreamer. And, and we're doing another video today because um, I guess I was more the pusher this time for this video because I felt like there was some some big thing coming um, from this and, and an important topic to discuss. And we're going to discuss today um, basically how to say or stay sane in this, you know, maybe we can say a bit crazy world right now we're living in where there's so much information, so many gurus, teachers, astrologers, you know, speaking their minds constantly and bringing so much information and maybe even the news media and, and the craziness that's coming there. And the opportunities actually that are presented to us daily because there's so much things to do, so many courses to take, so many, you know, spiritual workshops to do, how to stay clear, how to make your own choices, what is right for you, what is not right for you. This is what we're going to talk about. So welcome, welcome, Cindy. Welcome, Joe. Hey, man. Good to be here. Yeah, definitely good to be here. Uh, so just going to do a really quick prayer, ask the creator to come in and bless everybody. All the people that watch the videos and that, that whatever needs to come through and receive, maybe help them to open their minds, bring some peace in. So I'll just ask creator, please come on in, be with me, Cindy, and Ian, bring through information. Whatever someone else who watches this video will bring good things into their home and minds. Bring peace, help them to understand and open their minds and find peace in whatever situation they are. Home oh, angels, guides, spirits, healers, helpers, especially connecting within their dream time, helping them to ground into the Earth Mother, trusting and knowing the Earth Mother is there to provide. And if they ask the right questions and they take the time to meditate, they will receive and find these things to help them to release whatever they're stuck in and find the happiness and peace move forward. And he's calling the spirits of the east, south, west, and north, and all of the children and then spirits of the earth mother, or like Julie Gwyn was worried about the other ones. Thank you for And the same creator today and for all the things that creator blesses everybody and brings into their life. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. And I just want to maybe say, Cindy, I think you have, have a story you might want to share with us today. Uh, yeah, there was a, we were recently at one of the Sundance ceremonies in uh, Alberta and that we would go to every year. Last year, there wasn't one uh, due to the circumstances of the world. <laughs> and so it was nice to go this year. And um, so much has changed inside of myself right so you're always learning you're always growing so I've been reading these books and they have been opening up things in me that's taking me deeper inside and it's giving me thoughts to ponder and I really love that and that that action part that I'm taking is reading the book and finding that part that like really strikes me and then pondering it so we find ourselves while well, we're at the Sundance and a ceremony, ceremony, not festival. A lot of people like to call it a festival, but it's not. It's a very, um, it's a Sioux ceremony and uh, just been really grateful to attend. I think I've attended seven over the last 10 years. And uh, so um, it's not my first time that I've been there and uh, we bring new people with us um, most every time that we go. And then this year uh, we got there and it's, okay, it's a sweat lodge that they have for the public, and that would be us. And um, for one, a uh, couple of the ladies with us, it was their first time going, and it's just nice to attend alongside of them. That first night there, I got all dressed in the, the dress that you wear in the sweat lodge, and we're all ready to go in there. We're waiting for them to announce it. And then there's something inside of me that just says, like, no, you're tired, don't do it. And I was like, <laughs> they're my friends it's the first time being there it's been two years since i've been to the sweat lodge or the sundance grounds um all these other sort of reasonings going on in my head to like go in there so anyways i decided no i'm not gonna go you guys enjoy 
I went into my my tent and then I, I couldn't sleep. I was wide awake. And I thought, well, it's weird that I didn't go into that sweat lodge. Anyways, let it go. Next day. Okay, well, I'm going to go in the sweat lodge this day. And uh, it's getting close to sweat lodge time. And then again, it was just like, no, don't go inside. And this is just inside my head, inside my body, whatever. This voice is like, no, I'm not going to go in tonight. I'm thinking maybe I'll go in the next day because this is the four or five days um, that we're there for. Um, and the next morning, I got up before everybody else did, and I'm just sitting outside by myself, and I'm looking at the sweat lodge. I'm looking at the Sundance tree in the distance. And then all of a sudden, inside of me, there was this feeling and this voice, I guess, said, you don't need this. Mm. And then I was just like, oh, why didn't you go into the sweat lodge? It's like. Inside me, I don't need that external sort of like a, a, we go to ceremonies and we do ceremonial activities because there's something inside of us that we need to discover or heal or experience. And in that moment, I recognized that I didn't need what I thought I would um, get from it, maybe from the past experiences, why I would do certain things. And just in that moment, it was like really calm and peaceful inside. It's like, I don't need to do this. And I was like, totally cool with that. <laughs> so there's three more sweat lodges after that. And I never not once said, I'm going to go and I'm going to get ready or anything like that. So I just listened to it. And I'm like, hey, there's a voice in my head that said I didn't need this. And it sounded a lot like me. <laughs> and so, and I feel that it's connected to the books that I was reading, which gave me these thoughts to ponder that everything we need is inside of ourselves. And I pondered that and I was like, well, how true is that? What does that mean for me? I don't understand, you know? So it felt like it connected not only my past experiences to my present moment, but how I learn and grow. And that was just me listening to that voice inside and that feeling to do what was right for me, not what the external, you know, circumstances may dictate, oh, you haven't been here in so long, or this is your opportunity with your friends. And yeah, so there was no need for it, I guess. It yeah. seems like almost there was this habit in a way of going there and doing these things. And it, 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 it seems like almost the mind was going, I, I need to do this, maybe I do this tomorrow. But actually the truth of who you were now or who you are now was like, like maybe, in, or yes, or no, 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 <laughs> don't go, don't do it, you know. And I, I think one of the things I wanted to mention here, I think it requires this kind of courage as well to kind of go with the voice or go with the intuition, like this is a really strong no for me. And I'm not going to do it, even if, if you know, a lot of people are doing it, most people are doing it, maybe, you know, even my partner, you know, is doing it. That can be also like, a, like a thing that pushes us towards it. But like, in that moment, when you, let's say, hear that voice, you know, make that or take that action or don't take that action, whatever, whatever that voice is, is suggesting is, uh, I think it's a very, very kind of like, um, beautiful story in a very very simple but a very very important one to kind of convey what we're discussing here yeah so joe do do you have your own side with this with this you were there as well <laughs> well with the uh, with the sundance uh i made a commitment to participate in this and what i did is i asked the creator i'm like am i meant to do this I'm really meant to do this then somehow I'm going to end up with an eagle bone that means I have to make the whistle and then I have to find a group and I have to find somebody that's gonna help me to be a part of this ceremony and so sure enough uh, I get a dream a few days later and sure enough in the dream this person is giving me an eagle bone so I go oh. off to this place a couple of months later and I'm just helping this person, we're buying rocks and stuff to place in her store. And I wanted some rocks. I wanted to give out healing rocks to people. So I went with her to his place and we did that. And I'm busy doing that. And when I get there, this guy is staring at me and says, can I help you? And I'm like, 
I mean, I'm going to look at rocks and I may buy some. I'm not sure at the moment. I'm looking for certain things. So he walks away and about half an hour later, he comes back and he says, can I help you? Or get that? You know, like, no. And so after we end up buying the rocks and we're heading to the car, the guy says, hey, you. And I'm like, oh, shit, here's that dream. <laughs> and he says, come with me. And I so I follow him around this building and we go to the back and there's this weird little shit he's got. And in the dream, there's this plastic box and he opens it and he says, which one is yours? And that's where I woke up in the, from the dream. So he opens this door and here's this little plastic box that I seen in, the, in this dream. And he opens it and he says, which one is yours? And inside was three bones. And the voice told me when I was waking up, take the middle one. So when I looked, there was three. And I'm like, he says, which one is yours? And I said, the middle one. And I'm like, okay, damn, now here I got to dance, right? And in, in, in the ceremony, they say you have to commit to four years or you have to commit to a certain amount of years or you got to do 17 years to be a leader and all these things. And I'm like, this is between me and creator. I don't know how long I'm going to do this and I'm not going to commit to anybody because they have their rules and they have their beliefs and they have all this stuff. And I'm like, already connected to creator. So this is something I'm going to go and do. So I end up in doing it for two years. For two years, I'm like, I don't think I'm dancing anymore. This is something inside me and I feel okay with this. And so I know I don't need to do all these things. All I got to do is meditate, pray, talk to creator, and I get my answer. So I don't really need to spend 17 years and all this other stuff doing these things. And so I stepped out of that. And then certain people are peer pressuring me. Um, next couple of years, every time I go to the Sundance, are they like, are you going to dance? It's like, no, I, I'm done with this. And they're like, but you made this commitment. I'm like, I made a commitment to creator, not to you people, not to whatever you guys believe and think. This is something I did. And it was something inside me I needed to follow through because I did get the ego bone and I had to honor it to follow through. So uh, this last Sundance, when I was there, the there's no men were there, it was just women. And then when it was over, they were talking and it was like, in the Sundance, you make a commitment and you follow through and all this other stuff. And they're talking about it. And I'm like, oh, you're still trying to guilt me. You're still trying to make me feel like I owe you something. Mm. I don't really owe you anything. You need people to commit and come here or else you don't have this dance because you need people to come and they need to want to follow through and do all these things. And I'm like, I did what I told the creator I would do. So I'm not feeling really guilty or bad or anything. And every time I came here, I've done everything I can to help. Um, while I was there, they had me participate and do other things because when the ceremony starts, there's a sacred fire. And once they started, it can't go until the ceremony is finished. Everything has to be done. So Saturday night, they had nobody to watch the fire. And they're like, hey, Joe, can you watch the fire? You know, keep the fire going all night. So I'm like, sure. So during the day, I slept a couple hours and I got up all night and I was really tired. One point I fell asleep for a little while and I was like, whoa, I can't do this. I got to get up and make sure the fire doesn't go out. And that's the whole purpose of staying up all night and taking care of the fire. But while I was doing it, I was doing lots and lots of prayers and I was pondering, am I coming back here anymore? Am I going to keep, you know, coming and doing this? And somewhere inside I knew it was done. Hmm. I knew there was whatever I had to come here. I've learned, I've fulfilled, I've followed through. Whatever the reason, the universe brought me into this. And I really did a lot of things, lots of different things. And so I felt really good about it. But that's a really big thing of trying to understand in life is peer pressure or how do I fit in or how do I make somebody like me so I feel like I belong? Because of the biggest thing I was talking to Cindy this morning is how we get caught up in these kinds of things and we're searching for something. Like some people have to buy things like they're always going out and buying things like they buy all kinds of pretty stuff or stuff to put in their home. And they're always in and there's this really strong pull. And the only way they feel good is if they go buy something once they bring it in their home, 
they, they don't feel good anymore. And it's like they're searching to find something. And the whole idea is finding yourself. I am beautiful. I am deserving. I am loving. And once you start realizing it's, it's you and you start living that and you're not intimidated or you're not drawn into, mm. you know, wanting to be a movie star and all kinds of things because that's external. And people peer pressure you or guilt you or do a whole bunch of different things to make you go, oh, I need to do this. Mm -hmm. Is it really real inside you? Mm. Because throughout my life, I've had many challenges because I grew up, grew up in a community of natives and I was an only blue-eyed kid. And it made it very, very challenging and hard for me. And I didn't fit in with the Indians. I didn't fit in with the Eskimos and I didn't fit in with the white people. So wherever I went, I was always fighting or getting in trouble. And because I was blue eyed, I stood out. So I thought, well, okay, because I'm blue eyed, maybe I could play with the white kids and the police kids, nurses and teachers and that. Tried to play with their kids, but I was a native, so I couldn't play with their kids. So I go and try to play with my Indian cousins because I wasn't Indian enough and I was blue eyed, I get pushed out. So I go and play with the Eskimos and then they would push me out. So I didn't really belong anywhere. Mm -hmm. And everybody's saying, well, you have to do this. And so they're trying to tell me I need to speak a certain way or dress a certain way. Then I would be acceptable. And I'm like, no, I can only be me. Mm -hmm. So I dress the way I was. I'd have my hair the way it was. And I wouldn't do anything to fit in. And, and people would always say, you know, really like, you know, who do you think you are, you know, or, or they challenge me in different ways. And I'm like, just leave me alone. I'm not bothering you. I'm not interfering. I'm just being me. I don't need to fit in. If you're going to be my friend, then you're just going to accept me the way I am. So I went and sat with a lot of elders, a lot of older people, because they didn't care either. I'd either be their friend or I wouldn't be their friend. So I'd go and visit, have tea, sit and chat and talk. I wouldn't really hang out with the younger people because I always had to do something to make them believe that, you know, they liked me and I was willing to fit into their little way of believing their illusions that, you know, I was a part of them, but well, maybe I grease my hair and, you know, fit in and be a greaser or wear a jean jacket or a leather jacket. And I'm like, I never did any of that. I just tried to find what made me happy and I always seek to listen to the voice inside. So even when I was at the Sundance and it was ending and they were talking and I was like, okay, they're, they're, they're doing this thing again. And my commitment always has been to the universe. It's always, there's something bigger. There's an energy that's so powerful, no matter what, it's going to pull you. It's going to keep motivating you to move forward. And you have to find that beauty inside yourself. You have to believe you're a genius. You have to believe you're, you know, something that's, uh, bigger than what your human brain can perceive at this moment and that's always going to lead you forward all those little voices all those different strange experiences and you're going to find the right kinds of people that you fit in and you don't have to like i say do a lot of things they're just going to accept you and that's the hardest thing to learn but it's really really loving yourself you don't have to go out and buy something or do something because Somebody's going to love you for who you are and they're going to show up and you're going to learn to love them for who they are. But inside, we have all these weird things and we don't want to see ourselves as beautiful. So we got to buy something external to replace that, to try to fill us up that it can't fill that space. And it's something that's universal. It's really big inside us. And you recognize and honor that and it's, very, very powerful. It transforms things when you can stare in the mirror and really just accept yourself. Because before you were born, you were an angelic being and you designed your body. Your mom didn't design it, not the world, not anything. Every way your bone structures, your eyes, your hair, everything that you are, you designed that body to be the most perfect, beautiful temple that you wanted to put your soul in to experience this humanness. If it's a hundred years, then you've made it the most beautiful, sacred thing you wanted to be inside. But when we're born, all we try to do is see it as ugly or whatever, right? Our minds and the world try to make us believe this. So it's really hard to recognize and see yourself and honor yourself as beautiful, intelligent, a genius, 
you know, wealthy, because that's one of the biggest ones is, am I wealthy? Do I, you know, because some people are ashamed they're in poverty or they don't have this or, you know, they need a better car because sure, they got this little car. It does everything for them. It, it always starts. It always does everything. But they need this big Hummer ride around. So everybody can see them and go, ooh, look at that person. They have a Hummer. I mean, they're wealthy. They have everything. They don't need that Hummer or whatever. But inside, they believe the world has to see this before they're acknowledged. And it's all about seeing yourself and everything you have and your own successes because nobody is ever going to recognize that. The only one that's ever in your life is you. The only one that really knows your experience or anything that has gone on is you because you've been in every one of those experiences. So when you share your story or anything with somebody else, they're only hearing what you're sharing. They've never really been there to witness anything. I've been through all kinds of things in my life and only me knows that. And sometimes I share different things for different reasons because I feel it's important. And if I can go through all these different kinds of challenges and be here today, anybody else can. But I think the biggest thing we got to learn right from childhood is we're really, really beautiful. We're super intelligent. We're wealthy beyond belief. And poverty and other things are not really a reality. So don't be intimidated or bullied or pushed or into anything just learn to love yourself and eventually you're going to find everything that's rightfully yours so i have a question right now immediately to to both of you um after hearing these stories and that, thank you joe especially it's a great story um now like the similarities what you both shared were to me like First and foremost, you both seem to have a very, very deep connection with yourselves. And then in turn with, with let's say, the universe or, or, you know, the guides and the, the, you know, source, whatever people want to call it, you know. And it seems like this is one of those places for both of you to make those decisions, to kind of stay true to yourself and you know, really, you know, make those decisions that are, you know, right for you. Would you agree, or do you have anything more to add um, to that? Like going to the Sundance as a place to discover these things, um, or like let's say, let's say, maybe some of the practices you use to connect to that space with you, with you specifically. And, you know, may maybe, you know, just how people can maybe recognize that voice and start recognizing that voice. Can I just yeah, start? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Cindy came into my life about 11 years ago, and she didn't really have a lot of understandings. And I said right away, well, I'll help you. And I brought, brought her to many, many different things. I brought her to sweat lodges. I brought her to a lot of different ceremonies psychic people and things and she stayed true even though i brought her into these things she mm -hmm. still wanted to stay true to herself so i would teach her things and she would challenge me because somewhere inside she wanted to be true to herself she didn't didn't just want to accept or become something to make me happy mm -hmm. and there was times where she challenged me and she wanted me to do certain things in a way to make her happy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we both stay true to who we are and we're still growing because life is about learning and growing and really being there and compassionate and loving. And that's what I really loved about her is there are certain things about her and she's really authentic and true about it. And sometimes she's not aware of it and she's just in it and she's just being herself. And then other times she goes into her humanness and lets that take over and there's a bit of a confusion, but about 70% of the time she she can be very authentic and just being in her truth and she didn't try to sell a part of herself or do something just to make me really really like her There's times mm -hmm. where she challenged me for a long period of time and I told her I don't want to try to make her a puppet I don't want her to just say well Joe said this and this is true it's not really and she would find lots of ways to look at it and she would take a long period of time, but she stayed true to who she is inside. And then with her family who don't understand, 
she's on the outside of that because they, they would like her to stay in what they they accept her as before she met me and Cindy is staying true to who she is and still moving forwards and she's not trying to conform or do something to make them love her more or like her it's like either accept me the way I am or everything is okay I'll just carry on living mm -hmm. so I'll just leave that to Cindy and she can maybe take that um, and so that's my experience as a partner with someone who has a lot of awareness <laughs> uh, so I'm thankful that he didn't say you have to think this way you know it's like is here's the experiences here's the the sundance ceremony the uvp ceremony the night lodge the sweat lodge um so many different places that i have gone and i went there and i had my own experience and um and then collectively they start to build and i start to question things inside myself like um and that's my best advice for anybody is to have the desire within inside yourself to want to know more mm -hmm. don't just say this is it this is the answer because it's not it, every day there's something more that will stack on top of that experience onto the next experience that aha moment is going to lead to the next aha moment there's always something more and that desire to know more um it become more and to, yeah it will just lead you that way as long as that fire is burning inside of you it will keep opening it up it'll bring you books it will bring you youtube videos it will bring you to teachers and you go into it for that period of time and when that period of time is up you just know inside yourself you'll get what you need and you'll take it to the next place where is that next place you just ask and it seems to find you in the strangest of ways sometimes and uh, yeah when i was a little boy my granddad one of the things he would always tell me is i don't want to make you my puppet <laughs> I questioned the universe really lots and he could see things spirits would come and give him answers and show him stuff and so he would make me do certain things and spirits would come in and all this stuff would happen and then afterwards he would make me sit down and explain what I learned from it what went on how did I understand or believe and he would always send me to elders and that and have elders tell me things or what they learned or how they saw things and what they knew so it was always like this little journey for me you know and I would ask him, I'm like, how did the natives know the creator? How did the natives know God? Like, what did they really know? Like, what were their words or, or the rituals or whatever that you grew up somewhere inside? You carry this wisdom and knowledge that connected you to all these things. And he says, you have to learn the new way. He says, if I teach you the old way, he says, one day you're just going to get up and you're going to go into those mountains. You're going to stay in those mountains and one day you're going to come out and you're not going to be able to survive in this world. He says, you're going to live the old way. You're going to go back there and it doesn't fit. He says, you have to learn the white man way. You have to learn all these things. And he says, one day you're going to connect all this stuff, but you're going to go back to the old way. You're going to be able to take all this stuff and you're going to fit it in with the old way. And you're going to make it bigger because you need to know all these things because there's many, many other people in parts to reality and you have to understand that. So he always told me, read, think and ask questions. There is no such thing as a stupid question because if you ask long enough, somebody will show up and answer that question. He says, there is no such thing as stupid. He says, in this world, people believe that. Or you see somebody sitting in a wheelchair, something wrong with them. There's nothing. He says, that person in the wheelchair is a special person. God made them that way for a reason. And they're there for something to show the world, to teach something. And he says, that's why they are. He says, other people are crippled in all kinds of things. He says, there's different reasons. He says, God has many kinds of special children and you need to see in a different way. He says, so it's really important to learn and study all these things. He says, if I do teach you this old way, he says, you will go there. And one day when you come back into the world, he says, you will not survive. You will not be able to understand. You won't fit in. So he says, I don't want you. I want you to think for yourself. I want you to figure out who the creator is, what you need to believe and everything. So I searched. I went to Buddhist temples. I went to sacraments, lamas. I went in, tried all kinds of meditation, going to groups. And I find the beauty in all of it. There's a really good book that I read. It's called The Science of the Dogon. 
and this guy search for all this knowledge in this tribe in Africa, what they do, and it's very ancient and how they know all this information. But in the end, when he gets to the end, he traveled the world, he traveled many, many places searching for the answer. And he says, all these, they all come together. Somewhere they all fit, they all make sense. And I learned that if you look for the good in everything, you're going to find the connections. You're going to see how everything links together. But if you're really searching for the negative, you're going to see the negative in everything and nothing makes sense. And today, when I look at a lot of different beliefs around the world, I just see all the connections. I see all the good in it. I don't need to go into a belief like Buddhism and look for the negative because they have 10,000 helms. Christianity is really simple. They only have one. In, the, in Buddhism, they have 10,000 <laughs> millions of demons and beings and entities and all kinds of stuff. They ain't Christianity. They have one, the devil, Satan. Like, they look at these different realities. So staying true to yourself is really <laughs> important. And that's one of the things my granddad had me do is just really look inside myself and really search for what I needed to find. And I'm glad for my journey and the things I share and do to help people. So that's really, really finding what what is here. And I, and that's why I like Cindy in my life, because I like seeing her staying true to things. We go to many, many things and she just does her own thing. And, mm -hmm. and people are like, well, why isn't she doing this? Like we go to a ceremony if it's natives and it's because I'm an elder, they figure she's got to run over Pull the plate up and come and, and serve me, and I gotta sit there like I'm an invalid and I can't take care of myself. She's like, No, he can take care of himself. She goes up, takes care of herself, and these natives are all looking like, Why like, aren't you doing this? And it's like, I never asked her to do that. Mm -hmm. I never asked her to do anything. I, if she really wants to do something, she's doing it because she is wanting to do it, and, and it's her um, decision to do that. So I really love that about that and her staying true to herself. and over the years, she realized that I'm going to stay true to myself. Yeah, I do. And I really do. And and it's a part of who I am. I, I cannot be something I am not. Thank you for that. I, I want to share a small piece here because um, I think it's important. And you mentioned it a couple of times as well because you know, I've been I've been a, quite a curious, let's say, person in, in t throughout my entire life. But I think after meeting you two, I went into because you're always kind of in that place of like ask questions like ask the creator ask you know be for me it's like being in a communion with you know whatever it is the creator whatever it is universe but it's 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 more like a um, interactive relationship you know that I've gotten from you guys with life with 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 the energies with everything that's around us and I think it's a really kind of big part guys for those of you listening to be in this kind of interaction these questions like is this true why is it here what does this mean do i want to do this like these questions open up for me at least they open up energy they open up the space they bring you know the guys they bring in the the, the guidance there that's outside kind of outside inside as well they bring it to you or let's say they they kind of <laughs> almost jerk it out of you you know in a, in a sometimes you know um, difficult way but um just asking these questions and and the, the second part about this is like slowing it down you know slow it down and ask these questions it's much easier to kind of start observing and start making these decisions and, and start seeing if, if these things are still true for you or is it something in the past you know and this is maybe one of the the things that i've gotten from you guys and 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 I've kind of maybe maybe it's even you know helped me develop that deeper commitment connection to to god to 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 the universe and to to myself as well and i just want to kind of encourage everybody because it's in that case it's not you getting the answers from a guru, from a teacher, from a news media, whatever it is. You are making that connection. You are making that um, action, taking that action, speaking those words, 
to, to get those those um, or that clarity in, in your life. Yeah, yeah, I feel important. Clarity is exactly it. And when you are asking the question, you end up slowing it down and making the space for the question because you're going to analyze your question. Like, oh, do I really want to know that? And then you, you can shift your question to be really what you want to know. Um, but if you're just firing question after question after question in your mind, thinking it's just going to come to you, you're not being very clear. So you can't get that clarity. So when you ask a very clear, precise question of the universe, when that answer comes in, it comes in clear. Mm -hmm. You know you asked it. One of the things I found about the Bible, and it says over and over in different parts, is see through the eyes of an innocent child. And when you really look at yourself, and when you were a child, you were so curious. Like if your child's going to grow up and he's, he's going to ask many, many questions. And when you answer him, he's going to say, why? Why? And you're going to keep trying to answer and you're going to try to expand his awareness because his little brain doesn't have the words or the way to take something apart and express it. So the more words you use, he builds the capacity. And the universe is the same way. The universe sees us in his innocent little child. So they don't see us at all so grown up you know, really wise and old, they see us and they want us curious. Because there's something about curiosity. There's something about a desire. There's something you're trying to find and only you can find it. And somewhere inside you carry that hidden little secret. And there's this innocent little curious child trying so hard to perceive and find and accept something. Mm -hmm. and, and I like using Buddha's an analogy, he says, there's a thousand ways to nirvana. Try at least 500. And if 500 doesn't work, try 501 because that might be the one that opens and gives you all the answers. But if you're not curious, you're not going to look for those 500. You're not going to lift that leaf or go sit under a tree or, you know, go sit in a Buddhist temple and curiously listen to them chant in some strange language. Like, Ooh, what is this? You know, there's this energy or something is like, this is freaky and scary, but man, I want to get into this stuff, right? And somewhere you got to allow that part of that because there's some little innocent child or something we bury and we hide in our side, inside ourselves and we forget it. Sometimes we need to let it out and get really, really curious and look at something or, so, oh yeah, like, you know, when I was a child, I had to hide a lot of things because if my mom saw me reading something or doing something, she's like, oh yeah, there you are, you're doing evil or whatever, right? My sister, when I was 16, she was like, what do you really want for your birthday? And I used to buy these comics, and I used to always go in the back and look at all these little things you could order from wherever, right? And there was one, and it said, white magic. I always see this. I was like, ooh, I really love to get this. I'm so curious. You know, I want this. I want to know what white magic, what kind of power, what is in the like. So my sister told me this, and I says, okay, I'll show you, but don't tell mom because she thinks it's me mad at me if you find this out so my sister ended up ordering this thing and on my birthday she gave it to me i was you know sitting up my room she said hey joe and i'm like yeah and she says i got something for you and i'm like oh yeah whatever you know i thought maybe she's gonna give me you know some little trinket or something and she comes into my room and she has this book in front of her and it says white magic and I'm just like, this is like the biggest thing right and i know i'm gonna get in a lot of trouble for this so I'm like secretly reading this thing and I'm like, how can I hide it, right? And all this different stuff. And then in it, it, it says, you can do this and do that. And I'm like, it's not really white magic. Because there's a thing, it says, you can do this and you can trip a person. I thought, well, I'm going to try it. Maybe it's not bad karma. Maybe it's, I just wanted to see if it works. So I went in and I followed a person and I did exactly what it did. And this person tripped. I'm like, okay, I don't know if I did it, so I'm going to try it again. So I tried about four times, and each time the person tripped, I'm like, oh, my God, this stuff, you know, you can hurt people. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of other stuff in there, and I'm like, I don't know, this is the white magic. So, yes, I learned all this. I tried throwing it away. I threw it into the garbage, and a couple of days later, there it's at the bottom of my drawer, and I'm like, how did it get here? So I tried to throw it away again. And then I can't remember if somebody asked me because I told somebody about it, they wanted it, and I gave them this book and it was gone, right? 
Yeah, there was one other thing, and it was about money. And I thought, okay, I don't really know or believe in this, so I'm going to buy it. So I ended up buying it, and I ended up getting all this money, and it really freaked me out because I didn't know if it was a good thing or a bad thing, but I was so curious, and I was like, i got to do this even if it gets me in trouble, right? And and that's that's a part of it. There's something inside you, but my intention was not to take that and use it in a way to harm anybody or try to be powerful. And when you put those things aside and you just want to learn something to, to see or discover, I mean, you'll do it in your own way. And like, for me, everything in life is, is not about trying to hurt or manipulate or do something. I don't believe anybody has power over anybody else. I believe eventually whatever your journey is, you're going to find it if you really allow that beautiful part of yourself out and really live that. Thank you. I think that's a solid place to <laughs> that's a good place to end and, and wrap it up and 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 guys just uh, kind of the summary just ask questions be curious you know slow it down from those places it's easier to make these decisions in this type of time there were you know people are turning into robots and and the information is distorted in every shape or form so be be um as vigilant as you can with this and 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 um, stay true to yourself and if you're looking for for help with this joe and cindy both do you know um you know help people that come their way and i will put the fox streamer link in the description of the video so you can you can contact them and hopefully we'll do more of these videos and i hope you'll you will like them and if if you have any questions for us you know uh, leave them in the comments and We'll do our best. Thank you guys yeah. and see yeah. you next time. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Ian. God bless everybody.